No problem, man. Super hype. everything's good man uh just busy you know a lot of things going on um as you mentioned you know djing and school and working out it's a whole big balance that i have to you know balance you know i have to balance it out and uh you know been busy with it but it's uh it's a lot of fun yeah Um, wow, that's a great question. Honestly, I think, um, a big thing that I struggled with early on, um, is I feel like this was ne never really discussed or anything, but, um, confidence. And I think going into, uh, your, your older ages, um, with confidence, you know, as the years go by, um, and really believing in yourself and trusting yourself along the way um, definitely leads to a lot of success. Um, I know as it pertains to DJing, um, you know, uh, I started probably oh, around eight to 10 years ago with all that music stuff. And, uh, you know, you, may, you get made fun of, um, you get people telling you stuff um, that, you know, really makes an impact on whether you think you want to do it. Um, but it's really up to you to stay strong and stay motivated um, to, to really get to where you want to be and get to what you want to do. So I think that's, uh, that's definitely a key that I tell myself, you know, way back in the day, it seems like, but it's really not that far. Yeah. Yeah. No problem, man. Uh, you know, another thing that I also want to kind of mention here is um, I feel like uh, over the last two years, I feel like a lot of people have gone through, um, you know, depression and a lot of different things because of the, uh, you know, coronavirus and staying at home and not really getting out. And I think that was a big thing for me. Um, I feel like um, you know, not only me, but a lot of people, um, it really, it really hit when I was so used to going out and having fun, my friends and, you know, doing all the things that you do in a life, you know, and, and I feel like that was all kind of taken away, um, pretty quick, um, and all at once. So it was definitely a lot to take in, but now that we're starting to get back to normal, um, I feel like, um, you know, the happiness is coming back, the, all the events are coming back. Um, you're able to spend time with family and friends again. And uh, it's just a great time right now. Yeah, so... Um, you know, when I was really young, um, I actually, I I've been singing since I was, I mean, just as soon as I came out of the womb, it feels like, um, you know, I've been singing. My grandma was a huge influence on me, um, you know, singing and, and getting into music from a very young age. So, um, you know, I started singing from a very young age and then that worked into, you know, growing a love for, for just listening on the radio. I, I listened on the radio and, you know, within a week, I'd, I'd know all the lyrics to every song that would come on. So it, it was just, I don't know, it was something, I don't know if it was a God-given talent or what exactly it was, but I've always had a thing for music from a very young age. And, um, you know, 
going back about probably, like I said, eight to 10 years ago, um, I really grew a love and passion for EDM music. Um, and that's when I started making it. Um, it took me a lot of time to really master producing. Uh, there's a lot of different key components that honestly, these people, they'll, they'll go on YouTube and they'll say, hey, here's a mastering class on how to produce, but it really doesn't work like that. You have to really learn your strengths and weaknesses um, on your own. And you can't, um, I mean, you know, some of those classes will help you, but you really have to be strong for yourself and really learn how to produce and learn how to sound design. And there's so many different little key aspects um, to producing that a lot of people don't really understand. You know, there's a difference between beat makers and producers, in my opinion. Um, and, and there's a lot more to producing than there is to beat making. And, um, you know, uh, as far as DJing goes, um, it's been very interesting. Um, I've had people tell me in the very beginning that, yo, Hey, DJ Modica was kind of like a joke, you know, it was like more or less a joke. And then, um, what ended up happening is. I fell in love with it. I, I love EDM music. So I was like, you know what? And I started listening to David Guetta. Um, I started listening to Steve Aoki and I started seeing some of their shows and I was like, man, this is sick. I'm like, if I could do this, um, I, I'd love to. So I uh, bought a DJ controller um, and I actually... <laughs> You know, a lot of people, they'll, they'll start off and they'll buy like, you know, beginner DJ controllers and, you know, they'll, they'll spend like little money, you know, on a DJ controller because it's their first one. But um, I actually bought uh, a DDJ 1000, which is uh, a pretty good um, starter DJ. And for all those people listening out there, you'll know um, if you produce and DJ um, that the DDJ 1000 is actually a really good controller to start off with. So, um, you know, I, I wanted the best for myself from the very beginning. Um, and I think if you set the bar of expectation very high, um, you can, you can then really work towards that. Um, you don't want to start off low and then, you know, you, you lose interest in it because you're not fully invested. And I think, um, you know, being fully invested from a, from the start is really important if you want to be successful in the industry that I'm in. Um, another thing that I'd say is, um, for anyone looking to like start DJing, um, I, I think you should do it. Uh, it's very simple. I think you should do it, go after what you want to do, um, as far as DJing goes, um, and really be persistent because there's so many DJs, there's so many people that are trying to, you know, do the same thing you want to do, but it's really up to you to continue to push towards that, you know, um, connect with as many people as you can, because you never know um, who you might end up meeting with one day, you know, like um, this whole podcast, I never thought would happen but we ended up running into each other and it's like, you know, it's an amazing thing because it's like, you know, me and him were friends um, going back to elementary school and who would have thought now, you know, we're both 21, you know, and I'm doing a podcast for him. So um, it's just amazing to see how people that you never thought would get to where they are or where they are today. So I think that's, pretty inspiring um, for people to, to really connect with people that are out of your comfort zone, because you never know where that could lead in the future. Yeah.
Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, if you, you know, if, if we wouldn't have seen each other, then, you know, this wouldn't have happened. So I think, um, you know, really, you know, I think a lot of people today and in today's environment, and you have to be like this, I guess, in certain situations, but um, I feel like today in the environment that we're in, a lot of people um, don't really network and they try to use each other for different um, situations. And I think if people were to really just focus on themselves and uh, focus on others as well, but really focus on what they want to do and where they want to go. Um, I think that people would be better off instead of really like, you know, oh, let me meet this guy because he's this, or let me meet this one because he's this. Um, instead of really just focusing on the path that you want to go on and, and working through that path as much as you can by yourself until you really need someone um, to mentor you through it. Um, because I feel like in today's world, everyone's kind of like, you know, I need this connection. So let me see what I can do to get this, you know, um, when everyone should really, in, in retrospect, be trying to help each other um, as much as they can. So I think that's another big thing, you know, like in this situation, I think we're both helping each other here because, you know, we're, we're, we're good friends and we've been good friends, you know, this whole time, obviously, you know, we haven't speaking, spoken to each other in, in a while, um, but that doesn't, ruin the connection that we had, you know, going back all the way to elementary school. So I think, you know, keeping those people around and keeping those people relevant in your life, you never know, because, you know, you, you, you could, you could be like, oh, that guy was an idiot, or this, this person was that. But in the end, it's not good to have people like that. It's not good to have people that you look down upon. It's not good to have those people because you never know how they could be helping you in the future. I think it's really important to keep those connections, you know? Yeah. Oh man. Um, <laughs> so, uh, actually I DJed with them. Um, man, when did I, okay. It was almost a year ago, like today, actually. Um, and we, we, I DJed after them, I think. And, you know, I said hello to them, just like I say hello to everyone um, that I DJ with, you know, like, I don't really care. This is another important thing. Like, I don't really care how big you are, how small you are. It doesn't matter because we're all in this together. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, um, there'll be some kids that, you know, I'll, I'll get there and I'll dab them up and I'll say hello. And th they'll be like, yo, this is super sick. I'm meeting you, whatever. And I'm like, yo, I'm just a normal person, you know, like, I'm just, I'm just doing the exact same thing you're doing. There's nothing, nothing special about it. You know, we're both chasing the same thing. So um, with them, they were super cool. Like they were just really good people. Um, and, and they're not, you know, that they have a lot of a following They're, you know, they're definitely, they definitely have some clout, but um, they're just really sick people. Um, and, and you'll see that, you know, there's obviously some people out there that, you know, they're so caught up in their fame that they don't even realize what's going on around them. Um, and I guess it's just me, but like being around people that give off good vibes, you just can, you can read it. You can read it from the start. You know, you could just see that they're, they're a people person. They're all about, you know, making the connection, um, being good friends. That's just what it is. It comes down to just being good friends. Um, and we've, we've stayed in contact, you know, we haven't been, um, I guess, doing events together. It's been a while, but uh, we actually talked about doing an event um, coming up together. So that's pretty funny that you just mentioned them because they're super cool guys. 
Um, and we might actually be producing some stuff together in the future too. So it's definitely exciting. Uh, they're definitely cool dudes and I'm definitely blessed to have met them, um, in my career. Yeah, so I use FL Studios. Yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You're good. So um, I'd love for this to be my full time. Um, if it could be my full time, I would do it in a second. If someone said to me, hey, we'll pay you this, this and this and I'll do it. You know, you could do this full time. I'd say you got it. No problem. Um, but the problem is, is, you know, doing this is kind of inconsistent right now. Um, being real with you, it is definitely inconsistent. Um, I've been getting booked more um, in the recent weeks and recent months, but I don't think it's to the point where I could say, all right, this is my full time. This is what I want to do because, you know, I'm giving it my all, but at the same time, I still have to have something that is going to make me money and make me, you know, something good for the future. So obviously this could be really good for the future, but I think it's a little too early to tell um, whether it is something um, that I'm going to be doing in the future. Obviously, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep producing, keep DJing and keep giving it my all and we'll see where it goes um, and keep making those connections that are so very important. Um, but, you know, we'll see uh, where it goes. I think, um, you know, no matter how old I am, I'm still going to be singing. I'm still going to be DJing, whether it's, for a smaller group or whatever it is, because it's, it's definitely a passion that I have. And it's something that I definitely want to keep going with. Um, and that I love so very much. So, um, you know, I think, I think going forward, you know, I, I work at Publix. Um, I, I'm going to get my real estate license this summer. Um, so, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, move up through Publix, get in a management position of some sort, and um, do real estate on the side while also DJing. Um, and I think that's going to be a balance that I'm going to have to figure out. But I think I'll be able to do it. And I think I'll be happy doing it. Um, and I think by that time, um, I think I can really make a decision whether I want to really do DJing and invest in myself fully. Because right now, you know, obviously, I'm investing in myself as much as I can being a college student and and, you know, trying to balance everything. But, um, you know, I think, I think really investing and really taking the time to meet certain people is really important. And I don't think that I fully have the time to do that right now. So it's kind of holding me back in a certain sense. Um, but I'm trying to do the best that I can um, in the situation that I am, you know, being a full-time student and, and having a, a part-time job that almost works me full-time hours. So, um, you know, it's definitely a balance that I have to to come face with, um, you know, so, uh, business management, pretty oh. general. Yeah. Pretty general. <laughs> nothing, yeah. nothing too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think really having a job in customer service, um, really allows you to, to be a personal person um, with, with a lot of people. You know, I, I think that's why I'll probably do pretty good in real estate is because I'm very outgoing. Uh, you know, 
people might not want to talk to me. You know, they'll see me. I might look intimidating. I don't know. Um, but I'm very outgoing. I'll say hello to you before you say hello to me. You know, it's like very, um, you know, I don't mind uh, speaking in front of people. I don't mind doing a lot of things that people have the fear of. So I think, um, you know, really put myself out there um, and really, again, making those connections with people in the future is really going to help me out um, long term. Yeah, so um, let me see how I'm going to go about this. So I actually met this kid um, through Nova. Um, he's no longer at Nova. I'm not going to mention any names because uh, me and this kid don't have a very good, uh, I guess, rap anymore. Um, so what happened was, is this kid uh, was like, yo, you want to play at this club on Friday? You'll close um, you'll close, you know, it's either going to be opening or closing that you get the opportunity to do. They'll never give you a, a main show time, which is 12 to two, uh, at the clubs in Fort Lauderdale as your first gig. They just won't, they just want to see how you are and, and the people you can bring with you. Um, those are the two main components. Like anyone out there that's trying to get into clubs and, and really get themselves out there. If you have a good backing and you have a lot of people that you can bring, the club promoters, the club owners will love that. So if, if they see that you have a lot behind you, they'll definitely want to book you um, for club events. And I think that's a big thing um, if you're new to, to getting into clubs. Now for me, um, back to my story, um, I met this kid and he was like, yo, you want to open on, uh, you want to close on Friday? I was like, sure, I'll do it, you know? And, um, it wasn't a paid event. I did it strictly just to get out there. Um, and I think a lot of people need to realize that too. It's not about the money in the beginning. You need to really, uh, build your brand, build, you know, who, who you are and who you want to be in the industry. Um, first, before you really focus on money, everyone's so about the money, 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 but you need to get the exposure. You need to get the people behind you. You need to get the experience because it's completely different playing, you know, in my home studio than it is, um, in a club atmosphere. It's totally different. Um, it's a good different, but it's totally different. Um, and so anyway, so I played that event on Friday. It went really, really well. Um, and he was like, yo, you want to open on the next Friday? I was like, absolutely. So, um, I opened the next Friday, went really, really good again. Um, and then the next event I did after that was with the goon squad twins. Um, and that went really well. Um, and then I connected with them. I connected with another group, um, a boys called seeing double, um, Chris and Mike, they're two great guys as well. Um, you know, I definitely want to shout them out cause they're, they're an amazing group of people. Um, two really good guys that I'm actually going to go to the studio with next week. So, um, but, uh, you know, they're really, really good guys. Um, and so what happened was, is, um, uh, some stuff happened, uh, that I don't want to really go into. Um, but, uh, I ended up, you know, still keeping connect with the goon squad twins and, and seeing double. And we ended up coming together to find out that we knew another promoter who actually owned another club called Munchies in Fort Lauderdale. So um, that came about. And ever since then, um, the kid, um, Pete, who's been uh, booking me and really helping me in my career, um, has been nothing but honest, uh, nothing but a great guy who is, is, really good. Uh, one of the good people I've met in the industry, he really doesn't, uh, BS or anything like that. He's, he's straightforward guy and, and he's a, he's just a good guy. Um, and that's really important to find because there's a lot of people who just want their money and they don't care about you. Uh, they, they act like they care about you in the beginning to get what they want. And turns out they really don't care. So, uh, and they just want the money. So, um, to find someone like that, who's consistently booking me and consistently honest, 
um, is just really hard to find and really good to find. Uh, so I think uh, that's been the biggest thing for me is, is really finding the right people because there's a lot of people that seem like the right people. And then as soon as you get to know them and you see what they're all about, it's really a lot different than you thought. So uh, I think being confident um, in getting what you want is important, but also making sure that you're not getting screwed in the end and really uh, paying attention to certain things like that is really important. Yeah, so you're going to be kind of surprised. So um, honestly, I, I go to the gym three times a week. Uh, at least I try to. And uh, I really don't have much of a diet. I, I feel like if I was to really focus on the things that I was eating, I'd probably be even more yoked. Um, I just think what it is, is it's it's genetics. Like my dad has told me stories that, you know, he had a full six pack and all this stuff. And, you know, um, he was constantly working out with his, his buddy Ron and, uh, and they, they'd always work out and stuff and they'd get big really quickly. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this was before, like I, I even started working out. I'm like, I'm like, they were probably taking steroids or something, you know, like there's no way you could get big quick, you know, and, and just, you know, expect it, you know? So, um, you know, it really, when I started, when I started playing baseball in high school, um, I really got into working out and, um, everyone was like, yo, where'd this kid come from? Because I'd have like these noodle arms and I was like all skinny and then I'd work out and I, they'd be like, holy crap. Like what, what's this kid on, you know? And, um, you know, going through, through not to get off topic, but going through my whole baseball career that, they'd be like, yo, is this kid on roids? Like wh what's going on? You know? And I'd be like, no, man, I go, it's just genetics. And they'd start laughing and they'd be like, nah, like for real, what, you know, what's going on? And I'm like, no, I'm, you know, it's, it's my, it's my genetics. I, I just, I work out, I go to the gym three days a week. Um, when I was playing baseball, it'd be every day of the week. Um, and, and I just focus on really getting the right type of reps in really, uh, focusing on, um, technique more than, than weight. I think that's something that people have a misconception on is, oh, let's lift, you know, this, let's get to this amount of weight. It's not about that. It's all in the way that you lift. It's the way, um, it's the different techniques that you use, you know, um, making sure that you have all the right movements and making sure that you're doing the reps correctly. Um, I think that's a big thing that people don't understand is, when people go into work out, it's definitely, you have to be in the zone. Um, I think if you, if you go with people that, you know, are, are easily, um, you know, uh, swayed or easily can go off and do this, or, you know, they're, they're talking to other people, you know, it, the gym is, is very easily, it's a very easy way to get distracted while it's also very easy to get in the zone. If you just have that right mindset. Um, and so I think, uh, just going into the gym, even if you start, um, with, you know, one or two days a week, um, and just really start, um, focusing and, and seeing the goals that you want to set and, and actually doing them, um, you know, it's easier to start off with a less amount of goals than a lot of goals. So I think by setting, you know, a little per preliminary goals, like, you know, uh, I want to get to this amount of reps, um, 
you know, or this weight, uh, while also maintaining the same techniques in the same um, form, uh, while, while going up in weight, I think those little um, goals like that are really important. Um, if you want to really, uh, you know, get big. <laughs> So, um, honestly, right now, um, I feel like I'm probably bulking more than cutting. Um, I think going into the summer, I'm definitely going to want to cut. Um, so right now it's kind of bulk season. Um, but, uh, going into the summer, I'll definitely have to switch up my diet a little bit, uh, probably more proteins and, um, and less carbs, uh, and really try to, limit my diet there. Um, even though I love pasta and, you know, I'm Italian, so that's kind of all we eat, um, throughout the week. So, uh, it's definitely going to be tough. I love bread. I love pasta. So it's like, it's like, man, I don't know what I'm going to eat now, but, uh, you know, it's something you got to do. So you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one thing I want to definitely mention, um, on the music side of things is that, um, obviously I'd like to see myself, you know, signing with the biggest labels and, um, DJing at the biggest clubs. Like right now I'm trying to see what I can do to get into sway and dare nightclub, um, at the hard rock. And I'm really trying to, um, see who I can connect with over there and really build a relationship because at the end of the day, obviously they're going to be a connection that I use, but I also want to build a relationship with them so that it's not something that's just temporary because at the end of the day, you never know who that person could help you, um, you know, find or help you get to a certain point, you know, you never know. So um, that relationship is really important. Um, I think you know, uh, something that, uh, I'd like to see myself doing is, um, really working on, uh, building myself, uh, building my name and really getting myself out there more. Um, I feel like right now I'm, I'm doing a good job. Um, but there's definitely some things that I need to work on, um, on the promoting side of things. Uh, that I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning every day is a learning process. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely learning on how to do certain things um, and, and really how to control some of the things that I've been doing on social media, as far as, you know, uh, frequent posting. Um, Instagram's algorithm has changed a lot over the last couple of years. So it's, it's definitely something to get used to now. Um, so, you know, frequent posting, um, I'm going to get into reels, posting reels on Instagram um, and, and trying to do certain things that really engage the audience um, more than just posting my music and saying, hey, stream this uh, and just more more stuff with with other creators, too. You know, uh, I feel like that's such a lost thing right now is like, you know, people need to 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 work with other people to really build each other up. I think if if people were to do that, it'd be so easy to get where people want to be um, in, in their careers, not just in music, but in business, um, finance, you know, all that stuff. If people were to work together um, to get to that main goal that they both want to get to, whether it's one person that has a business goal that's working with someone in a music department who the business guy might have some good stuff to, to input on the advertising side of things. Meanwhile, that music person might just honestly be their best friend. Like it doesn't even have to be, you know, um, a business for a music thing. It could be 
that that person is, is there for them in their life. And the other person just wants to say, Hey, you know, I have this knowledge in that, let me help you with this. And if there were more people like that, I feel like it'd be a lot easier to actually get to where you want to be. Um, like for me, here's an example. Um, you know, I, in the beginning, it was very hard submitting music to labels. Um, I'd get like no response. It'd just be like me sending songs to these labels and I get no response and it'd be so unmotivating to like produce anymore. You'd be like, yo, why am I doing this? Like, why am I wasting my time um, when I could be, I guess, quote unquote, making money, you know, like, uh, why am I, why am I just wasting my free time on making music? And then I realized that it's just, it's something that I love and honestly getting rejected, I guess, you know, quote unquote rejected. Um, it's part of life, you know, everyone gets rejected at certain points. Um, and I looked at it as more of like a, like a, a motivation thing. Uh, you know, I, I told myself from the very beginning, you know, I wanted to get signed to spin in records, which is one of the biggest labels in EDM, if not the biggest. And, uh, two weeks ago, I actually signed, um, a track with, I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to uh, speak about this or not, but I'm going to do it anyways. This will be, I guess, a, an exclusive uh, interview. Um, and I actually signed a song with a sub label of Spinning Records called Controversia, which is um, for any of you EDM fans is a locks label. Um, and a lock is a big DJ. Um, and I'm super happy to have signed that song with his label and that's just the beginning of my networking with them um and and really yeah thank you man um and really uh building up through there so that's like the the start of it and then on a different side of it uh a big thing for me was to get signed to revealed recordings which i'm i'm wearing their, their shirt right now so um and i submitted probably honestly i submitted probably around 50 50 tracks to them like just 50 songs that i was like man you know like i'm like i'm like they got it they got to take one they got to take one um and so they finally took one uh last year and that was a big moment for me um and uh you know i I was i was I, i can't even I can't even have words for how excited I was. I, I woke up, I saw the email. It was like, Hey, Modica, we'd like to sign this. Uh, we love it. The team's been listening to it. Um, and I was like, it's immediately, I was like, yo, I'm so down. Uh, let's do it. You know, I, I didn't even really care about, I guess the contract, you know, everyone's like, yo, look at the contract, make sure everything's good. Um, and I, I was just so so happy uh that i just i saw the contract i was like i signed it luckily they didn't screw me or anything but um you know those are the type of moments that keep you motivated uh you know there's a lot of there's a lot of time where you're you're not really motivated uh because they you know they don't accept your music or they don't you know uh they don't even respond you know so at least a response of hey we listened uh, it's not something we're, we're, you know, listening for, willing to sign at the moment, but hey, keep sending, you know, like something like that would have been really nice. And some labels do that, but, you know, most of the bigger ones, they don't have time to respond to everyone. You know, they, they don't, they get so many demo submissions a day that, you know, the, the really, really good ones, the, the top 1% or top 2% get the response, you know, that they're looking for. So, um, you know, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of different things that, uh, you know, you have to keep pushing towards if you want to get to a certain point, um, in your career. And, um, I think that's really important. You know, like I said, from the start, motivating yourself and having that self-motivation, um, to get to where you want to be is really important. Of course, of course, man. I uh, I had a great time.
Yeah. So um, actually, you guys can uh, follow me. Uh, it's official DJ Modica on Instagram. Um, you guys can always hit me up. Uh, I know uh, I have a lot, a lot of people following me. Uh, but if you DM me, I promise I'll respond. Um, I'm not one of those that's like, yo, I have this amount of followers. I'm not going to respond to anyone. If you guys have any questions for me, um, you guys want to connect, uh, grab lunch and talk about anything. Um, if you live in Florida, Coral Springs area, um, just hit me up. I'm open to anything. This has been a blast. I'm super excited that we got to do this. Uh, it's definitely something that we've talked about for almost a month now. So I feel like to finally do it, it's been great. Um, it's been a lot of fun and I, I really appreciate the opportunity, man. You too, man. Thank you.